Tonight we're continuing in this series of messages on uh, the revelatory ministry of the miracles of Jesus. That is to say, the miracles of Jesus provide a sort of index of what he's doing. They introduce Christ's work, what he's doing. They introduced his kind of salvation. Jesus really doesn't have, he doesn't come as a, as a helper. He comes as a savior. <laughs> There's a, there is a big difference. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, the Holy Spirit, I understand, is a helper, but it, he presumes that the Savior's preceded, the Savior's preceded him. Mm -hmm. So he's primarily a helper, a uh, Savior, and and as you look at his miracles, you find all these people were helpless; they couldn't really do anything of themselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, that this, of course, posed no problem for the Lord Jesus, and, and your your situation doesn't either. Maybe an intense problem for you, but it isn't any for Jesus. Now tonight we're going to deal with one of one of the or seasons of miracles that is like a cluster of miracles, and we don't know who who the people were. It just tells you that Jesus did a lot of things at one time. Mm -hmm. Now something I want to draw to your attention here that some of Christ's miracles are for higher purposes. Some of Christ's miracles aren't for the people He did the miracle to. It really wasn't primarily for them, we're, and we're going to find uh, such an incident tonight. Now let me give you a couple of incidents of this, how this is actually proclaimed. The miracle Jesus did was for a higher purpose than the person that, that received it. Mm -hmm. Matthew, the ninth chapter and the sixth verse, a man's been let down from the ceiling, and he's, sitting at, he's laid down there at Jesus' feet, and he said to the man, I nice, be of good cheer, son, son. Be of good cheer. When oh, Jesus called you a son, I mean, this is a good thing. Yeah. Be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven you. Mm -hmm. This set up a controversy by the listeners. They didn't mind Jesus being sort of a good person to have around and helping everybody, but they didn't want to get, get too deep into things they thought that God alone did and not mm -hmm. very often at that. Mm -hmm. So Jesus said to this man after he had... He was aware of all this discussion, Matthew 9, 6. But that you may know mm -hmm. that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Mm -hmm. Then he saith to the sick of policy, mm -hmm. Arise, take up thy bed, and go into thy house. Mm -hmm. The thing Jesus wants you to know the most is not that he can heal you. This is no problem for Jesus at all. That's right. It's that he can forgive your sins. That's the big item. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. That's what you have to have him before you can enter into the world to come mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. be favorable in his sight. So there's a miracle rock there that Jesus did so you'd know. Mm -hmm. See? Now here's another incident in which Peter captures the entirety of Christ's earthly ministry in Acts 2.22 on the day of Pentecost. And he says, You men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you as you yourselves also know. So here Peter captures all of these great miracles that Jesus did somewhere in the vicinity of recorded ones, like 42, something like that. And some of them were great clusters of multitudes of people. About 42 different instances that are recorded. And Peter wraps it all up and says, this is how God was approving of Jesus. Yeah. God is telling you, this is my man. This, mm -hmm. is, this is the man that I've appointed for a covert. Amen. Amen. So we have such a miracle before us, a miracle that had a high, high purpose found in Luke, the seventh chapter, one of the great incidents of Scripture, verses 21 through 23. And in that same hour, he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits, and unto many that were blind he gave sight. Then Jesus answered and said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things you've seen and heard, 
How that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and to the poor the gospel is preached. Mm -hmm. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. Now just prior to this sort of cluster of mighty miracles, Jesus had just raised the son of the widow of Nain just before this. <clears throat> he was going into the city, and as he's coming in, the funeral's coming out. And you remember he had uh, compassion on this widow. It was, Scripture said it was her only son. He raised him from the dead, and his fame began to spread, spread abroad. I've, uh, I've sought to emphasize this. Sometimes I feel as though I have not done a very good job of it. But if Jesus, if you can ever find Jesus working, mm -hmm. word will get out. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. You really don't have to have a course telling people how to mm -hmm. testify about Jesus. What you need is Jesus to work. Amen. When he works, now you just trace through scripture. You don't have to mm -hmm. just speculate about this. His fame went abroad. Why? Because he did something. That's right. And it was very apparent. On the day of Pentecost, word got out that someone was testifying about the wonderful works of God. And they came to hear what was going on. See, once God works, He does not do things in a corner. This is not God's manner. If He delivers Egypt, word gets out a long way away. Many years after and 40 years later, Jericho, they'd heard about it. And when Balak that tried to get Balaam to prophesy against Israel, he heard about it. When God works, when he works, word gets out. Mm -hmm. Now you can note this in your book. Mm -hmm. That when there's a general sense of unbelief and skepticism, God's not working in this way. Amen. Right? That's why Gideon said, where's all the miracles? Mm -hmm. You guys, well, you're about to, you're, we're about to resume where I left off. <laughs> He said to Gideon. Very important truth to see. I think sometimes people try and cause cause God to get a reputation. God, God, you just you ask God to work. He get, he'll get his reputation will happen. Now news of this spread throughout the region, and during this whole thing, the disciples of John the Baptist report what's going on back to John, who's in mm -hmm. prison. He'd been in prison for a few months. He was in prison about roughly about a year before he was before he was beheaded. And uh, they went back and told him about it. <clears throat> Matthew, well, in Luke, here's what uh, here's what Luke says. Luke uh, seven eighteen. The disciples of John showed him of all these things. That's after he raised this widow's son, and then the word began to go that. Somebody, we got a religious man among us that's actually doing something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Something's happening where he is. And John called unto him two of his disciples, sent them to Jesus, <clears throat> saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? Matthew records this incident. Now when, Jesus, when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Quite, a, quite an incident. Many of these scholars, you might be interested to know that most of these are modern scholars. For many hundreds of years, no one talked like this. Mm -hmm. But commensurate with the age of reason mm -hmm. that, kicked, that kicked God out of society, the whole theological posture of the church changed and it's never been the same since. Right. Mm -hmm. It has never been the same since. That's when all the higher criticism come in. That's when all the footnotes started to be in the Bible. That's when all these things happened. When God was kicked out and reason was vaunted. Yeah. Until that happened, people, they took the position that what John was doing was he was showing his disciples this. But since then, they say, well, John had a, a bout with doubt. That's what happened. John was in prison. He got to wonder. I wonder if this really is the Christ or not. Now, I want you to take a moment to show that this is an absurd notion. Mm -hmm. 
John, for one thing, had had heavenly confirmation that this was the Christ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. He was, he'd heard from heaven. Mm -hmm. he, he didn't need another witness about, is this the Christ? He'd seen a visible sign from heaven. In fact, that's the reason why he came. Yeah. He came baptizing so that Jesus would be made known when he was baptizing. So I want to take a moment here and give the, what John had to say about this. Mm -hmm. This is John 1.31. John the Baptist himself is speaking. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel, therefore am I come baptizing with water. And John bare record saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it abode upon him. And I knew him not, but that he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, unto whom... Thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, mm -hmm. the same as he that baptizes with the Holy Ghost. And I saw mm -hmm. and bear record that this is the Son of God. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind this man is filled with the Holy Spirit from his mother's womb. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We know from the answer that Jesus gave that this was not some kind of sign of weakness. Right. Jesus responded to the people uh, about him. I'll read just a, just a moment. I want to read a, a, something else that John the Baptist said about Jesus. John actually said a lot more, I think, than some people know. This is uh, John, the third chapter, began at verse 26. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizeth, and all men come to him. And John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except to be given him from heaven. Amen. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This, my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. Mm -hmm. He must decrease, but I must increase. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthy, and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he has seen and heard, that he testifieth, and no man receiveth his testimony. He that hath received his testimony hath set to his seal that God is true. This is John the Baptist talking. For he whom God has sent speaketh the words of God, for God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hand. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. That's John the Baptist said that. Mm -hmm. Does that sound like a doubter? Does this sound like something a doubter says? No. I'm offended when people who claim to be scholars cast aspersions on holy men of God that yes. God has not said one single bad thing about. That's right. That's right. I, I don't like this. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I would like to know who started these things so I could just tell them what I think of their stinking theology. There's enough trouble people have with doubts without mm -hmm. it coming from the pulpits right. Right. and the classrooms. Mm -hmm. We don't need any more doubts mm -hmm. about Christ Jesus the Lord. Mm -hmm. So no, John the Baptist was not expressing doubt, wondering whether he maybe should be released and go back to baptize. Because if this wasn't the Christ, he had to set out baptizing again. Yeah. He had to go right back out, back out to Jordan, start baptizing again, look for somebody else. They would have two folk the Holy Spirit come down on. See, this is a dumb, Yeah. this is an ignorant view. Uh -huh. It really is. Now, John the Baptist has been in prison. We don't know exactly how long here, but by the time he was beheaded, it was around a year. And this is, some, this is after the first year of Christ's ministry. And John, uh, Jesus' ministry started right about the time John the Baptist was imprisoned, a little, uh, little before it. Now it appears to me that what the, the disciples of John are the ones that had the doubts. Mm -hmm. See, Peter and Andrew, they were John's disciples. Mm -hmm. And they'd already left John following Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now we got about a year later, these disciples are still with John. Mm -hmm. They're not disciples of Jesus. So it seems to me that John is telling his disciples, I want you to 
you got to be able to see that my ministry is over. You should be supposed to be following Jesus. Mm -hmm. Not my disciples anymore. I told you I got a decrease. Mm -hmm. Here you're coming reporting this to me. I will also know by Jesus' answer that uh, this was not a sign of doubt in John the Baptist. Here's what Jesus said. First, he told, the, he told the messengers, he worked these miracles, and said, tell the, tell the messengers, the, the two people, John said, go back and tell him. And then, when the messengers of John were departed, this is uh, Luke 7, 24, he began to speak unto the people concerning John. What went ye out to see into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken in the wind? But what went ye out to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they which are gorgeously apparelled and live delicately are in king's courts. But what went ye out to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and much more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before my face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. And I say unto you, among those that are born of women, there's not arisen a greater prophet than John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. But he that is least in the kingdom is greater than he. Not person to person, but because of the position. John the Baptist was a giant standing in a valley. Mm -hmm. You're a midget uh -huh. standing on a mountain. Yeah. Amen. That's the difference. So it's yeah. nice where we are in Christ, not who we are mm -hmm. <laughs> at all. So Jesus commends uh, John the Baptist. You know, he didn't say, now just make sure you don't doubt like John the Baptist did. Don't you be doubting like he did. That's not what he said. Mm -hmm. And so that's not what we will say. See, to me, John was anticipating his death, and he's moving his disciples toward the Lord Jesus. And when they, this, his disciples asked Jesus this, he just kind of ignored. He had, first he ignored them. And he worked this cluster. <laughs> he worked this cluster of miracles. Let me read it to you again because it's quite remarkable. Just picture yourself now. You've you've come to Jesus and said, uh, "Are you He, or should we look for another?" And, and uh, the same hour, the same at that time, he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits and of and unto many that were blind he gave sight. That, mm -hmm. That's the first thing he did. <laughs> I want to look at these different ailments that he healed. Infirmities, plagues, evil spirits, and blind. Because they're a picture of what happened to humanity when sin entered into the world. Mm -hmm. Disease is a, is a daughter of death. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. The only reason there's disease is because there's death. Right. Mm -hmm. To get rid of death, you don't have any disease. Amen. Amen. That's why there's going to be no doctors in heaven yeah. <laughs> or prayers for the sick. Mm -hmm. Because there's going to be no death. Yeah. So what we're seeing, this stuff is brought in by sin. And it, death, breath, death brings this. Infirmities are technically, there's uh, some of these definitions, they sort of cross. They're not, they're not fine, distinct lines, but they're given little different shades of, of these, uh, this matter of uh, debility, human debility. Infirmities are a disease or a sickness, an illness or a malady. Well, I'll say it this way, it impairs your normal functions and it has certain symptoms. Some, something's not working in the body. David said, well, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Yeah. My physical constitution as well as my spiritual constitution. But sometimes uh, it, it, things aren't working or the deter in a state of deterioration. Let me give you some examples of infirmities that are mentioned in, in Scripture. You remember the uh, woman that was bowed over? Here's what it says in Luke 13, 11. Behold, there is a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and bowed together mm -hmm. and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. Mm -hmm. So here, here's a woman that couldn't, she couldn't stand up. Mm -hmm. Bowed over, called an infirmity. I'll give you another. 
This is an impotent man. John, the fifth chapter. By the pool, Bethesda. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity. Thirty and eight years. You think you have your problems? Mm -hmm. Huh? Thirty and eight years. Mm -hmm. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he'd been there a long time in that case, he said unto him, Without be made whole, and the impotent, see, he tells you what this infirmity was. Then. Mm -hmm. Impotent, paralyzed, in other words. He couldn't, he was immobile. Mm -hmm. The impotent man answered, Sir, I have no man when the, mm -hmm. when the water is troubled to take me in, put me in the pool, and while I'm coming, another step it down before me. Jesus said unto him, Arise, take up thy bed, and walk. Infirmity. Infirmity, abnormality. Something's not functioning at all. Here's another example. Paul spoke of his infirmity. In fact, one of his trips, he got sick. And uh, he stopped off in Galatia, and because of that, they heard the gospel. Mm -hmm. He refers to it in Galatians 4.13. You know how through infirmity of the flesh I preached the gospel unto you at the first <coughs> infirmity. His health broke, broke down in some way. He doesn't give doesn't give particulars. A little later in 2 Corinthians 12 chapter, he tells you that he had a lot of these. Mm -hmm. He had a lot of these bouts of infirmity where something didn't function right mm -hmm. in his body. 2 Corinthians 12, 5, Of such a one will I glory, yet not of myself I will not glory, but in mine in infirmities. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? Well, when, when these things aren't working, I found that Christ starts working. Mm -hmm. and, I, and he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. See, there's mm -hmm. another elaboration of infirmity. Mm -hmm. Most gladly, therefore, I will glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. See, mm -hmm. so the better your flesh works, it's like kind of a liability. Yeah. We don't long for people in your flesh not to work. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But if you are a real, real well person, mm -hmm. you have to be alert. Because mm -hmm. really, really good circumstances and really, really good health, if you don't use it for the glory of God, it can hide things from you. It can make you think you're better than you are. Yes. And that you're stronger than you are. Suppose I'm going to glory my infirmities. Not, not because I delight in being this way. Right. <laughs> that isn't why. But because I'm finding I have access to something that normally I didn't have access to. Mm -hmm. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches and necessities, in persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I'm weak, then am I strong. See, infirmities. Timothy, he was apparently chronically mm -hmm. ill. A young man. 1 Timothy 5.23 Paul counseled him, drink no longer water, but use, mm -hmm. not drink, use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thine oft infirmities. Mm -hmm. Often infirmities. So in your infirmities were a malfunctioning of the body and some took a whole variety of, variety of appearances, but it was uh, not something that pleasant with it all. And then when these people came, Jesus healed a lot of these kind of infirmities. What they were, we don't know exactly. Second category was plagues. Plagues are distressing bodily affliction and oppression, sometimes accompanied by great, com uh, great pain and shame. Sometimes accompanies it. Let me give you uh, an example of some plagues. Get the idea in plagues that something goes worse, gets worse and worse. Mark 5:29. This is the woman with the issue of blood. Straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up and she filled in her body that she was healed from that plague. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he said unto her, Daughter of thy faith, it may be whole, go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Mm -hmm. See, something that kept getting worse and worse and there was a sense of shame about it. Mm -hmm. Back under the law of Leviticus, Leviticus 13.2, the scripture spoke of, of the plague of leprosy. Mm -hmm. Leprosy was a plague. So this was something that was very uh, grievous, accompanied with shame and sometimes pain. And then he, uh, he healed many of, of evil spirits. 
Mm -hmm. It's like a whole different category now. Evil spirits. That is, they were dominated or controlled by personalities outside themselves, spiritual personalities. They were under the domination of some of these dark spirits from the Satan's dark world, powers of darkness. Now, you can't train people not to be under the domination of these kind of spirits. Mm -hmm. There's no course. <laughs> There's no course that teaches you how to deal with evil spirits. That's right. There isn't. Before Jesus came, these evil spirits were more dominant than they are than they are now. Wherever Jesus is diminished, these evil spirits like they come in. If you push Jesus out, he, these come in. Evil spirits. Other scripture speaks of some people that had particular evil spirits. I think of Mary Magdalene. She was among certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. How's mm -hmm. that? Seven. <laughs> seven. One young boy had one. Now the evil spirit threw him in fire and threw him in water. Mm -hmm. Looked like he was dead sometimes, like he was going to die. Evil spirits. Luke 9.38 and behold, a man of the company cried out, saying, Master, I beseech thee, look upon my son. He is my only child. And lo, a spirit taketh him, and he suddenly crieth out, and it teareth him that he foameth again, and bruising him hardly departeth from him. Well, you know, I wonder what they'd have called it in our day. I wonder what they would have called this in our day. Uh -huh. Evil spirits. Mm -hmm. That there is such a thing as a sense, and a sense is sort of frightening mm -hmm. if you don't think of Christ in the context of Christ. Mm -hmm. Men may uh, may be quite cultured and have a lot of uh, training and uh, all of this sort of thing. When you get into the world of evil spirits, I'm telling you, you are in something. Man is powerless. Amen. That's right. He's powerless. Mm -hmm. Remember that the demon that. Leaped on seven sons of Sceva and whipped them. <laughs> Went out naked and bleeding. So this is a dark world. It's a world of these evil spirits. But Jesus didn't have any trouble with them. At all. They didn't leap on Jesus. Hey, let me tell you, no evil spirit ever leaped on Jesus or threw him down. <laughs> he healed many of evil spirits. And it... Uh, it says, and he gave sight to many that were blind. It's kind of interesting he threw that one through that one in. I'm sure you're familiar with some of these examples of blindness, but let me give you just uh, two. Matthew 9, 28, when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus saith unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? He asked them what they wanted. They said, Let us give us our sight. Mm -hmm. They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you, and their eyes were opened. There's Jesus. <laughs> What did he do? He, he just, uh, he touched their eyes. Mm -hmm. just, just touched them. He said, according to your faith, mm -hmm. their eyes are open. Matthew 12, 22. Then there was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him, and so much that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of these in uh, mm -hmm. Scripture about Jesus healing blind people. Now see, when sin entered into the world, Romans 5.12 says, death entered with it. Mm -hmm. Through one man, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. So sin opened the door and entered in, and death mm -hmm. <laughs> followed in, and that's what, that's what brought all these things in. Mm -hmm. Now there's two areas, in other words, deterioration set in, mm -hmm. into the human constitution, both the outward and the inward. Deterioration set in. There are two areas of deterioration. There's deterioration in the seen part, mm -hmm. diseases, plagues, blindness. Mm -hmm. There's in the inward part, uh -huh. evil spirits, corruption, uncleanness. See? Mm -hmm. Two types of deterioration. They all trace back to death, which trace back to sin. An effective Savior has to deal with sin and death. Yes. He has to deal with both of them. Amen. Because they're not going to do any good to find a remedy for sin, and death continues. 
It's got the remedy for both. And bless God, Jesus has. He's remedied the whole situation. He's dealt the death blow to death itself. Mm-hmm. Death had no power over him. Mm-hmm. Now then, after he had done this, Jesus turns to the messengers and he tells them, now you go back and you tell John what you've seen and heard. Mm-hmm. You just, just tell him what you've seen and heard. <laughs> Actually, this, uh, this is kind of a formula in Scripture. What do, what do you say? What you've seen and heard. Yes. What you've seen and heard. John the Baptist said to Jesus, what he has seen and heard, that he testifies. Jesus told you what he saw and what he heard mm-hmm. from the Father. Not, not, not among men. He wasn't chronicling what he saw men doing. Mm-hmm. He wasn't chronicling what men told him. He's chronicling what he saw at the Father. What the Father said. Acts 4.20 They told uh, the apostles to be quiet. And they said, We cannot but speak the things that we've seen and heard. Mm-hmm. I'm showing you, this is like a the way God is. Seen and heard. What you, if you haven't seen or heard anything, you got to keep quiet. Yeah. We aren't asking people's opinion about things. They really aren't. Mm-hmm. I know that some people greatly delight in bantering a question about and saying, what do you think about this and what's your opinion? That? But this, is, this is out of place. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, this is out of place. Mm-hmm. The people should do the talking to so people who've seen something and heard something. Amen. So tell them what you've seen and heard. Mm-hmm. Acts 22, 15. This is Paul telling what commission he'd been given. For thou shalt be his witness and all men of what thou hast seen and heard. That's what Ananias told him. What you've seen and heard, it's going to tell. The beloved brother John wrote in 1 John, that which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you. As you go back, you tell John what you've seen, what you've heard, Tell them, tell them that the blind see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like normally that's that's a oxymoron. That's, that's a contradiction. The blind see. Yeah. But of course, when they saw their blindness was terminated. That is, they had clarity of vision. Tell them they can see plainly now. Tell them that. Mm-hmm. Tell them the lame walk. Yeah. That's mobility. Tell them that the lepers are cleansed. No more defilement. No, see, he didn't say tell them they can be. Tell them they are. He, he worked this right, right in front of them while they were there. He worked Amen. These, worked Amen. These miracles. Tell them a deaf hear. Tell them they can discern now. They can tell. Different sounds. And tell them a dead are raised. Now, that wasn't mentioned there, but apparently that happened too. Uh-huh. Tell them a dead are raised, brought back from insensitivity and hopelessness. And tell, tell them the poor have the gospel preached to mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Tell them about that. A word of hope. Now these men, no doubt, being taught by John, are very familiar with prophecies about the coming Christ. Mm-hmm. And they knew that uh, these ful- this fulfilled what the prophet said was going to happen. Yeah. They told us what was going to happen when the Messiah came. Mm-hmm. Isaiah 61, which was the prophecy that Jesus preached in his first message in the, his hometown, Nazareth. The account is found in Luke 4.18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, sent me to heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance of the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. That was taken from Isaiah 61, which reads like this, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He said poor back then, you notice? Mm-hmm. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified, and they shall build the old waste places, they shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities and the desolation of many generations. What do you mean? The Messiah's been here. You know he's been here mm-hmm. when things change. Yeah. Amen. 
As long as things don't change, mm -hmm. Jesus isn't there. I'm, right. I'm sorry. That's just the way it is. That's right. We may go to the psychiatrist and he may say, well, well, we got this problem with your background. You've got this, uh, this uh, inherent difficulty you inherited from your parents. Or maybe this, someone else will come along and he got this generational curse upon you. But after all said and done, mm -hmm. if the change isn't going on, mm -hmm. Jesus isn't there. Amen. If it is going on, whatever you may think about it, yeah. He's there. Mm -hmm. Amen. See, that's what the prophet said. This abrupt change. Mm -hmm. In situations going to happen when Jesus comes, you go tell you go tell John what you see that things aren't the same. Mm -hmm. Now John the Baptist, he did no miracle. He never healed a blind person. He never raised a dead person. He never cured anyone of a disease mm -hmm. or an infirmity or a plague or blindness or cast out evil spirits. John the Baptist didn't do any of this. It's categorically said he did no miracle. Uh huh. Yeah. That for a reason. That's not why he came. If that's why he came. That's what he would have done. That's right. Mm -hmm. He came to to identify who the people were to start listening to. Mm -hmm. yes. That's right. what he came for. To pave the way for the Lord, mm -hmm. so he could say, "There's the one. Mm -hmm. Follow him." That went right up there. He's the Lamb of God that's taking away the sin of the world. So you go tell John. Well, he knew that. <laughs> he knew that when they went back, they'd be thinking about this. I'm sure John was glad to hear them say, so I t he might have said something like, I told you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I told you he was the one. Yeah. And he was. Now I want to uh, take a moment here. Uh, well, let, me, let me deal with some of these prophecies, first of all. <clears throat> Isaiah, the uh, 29th chapter, verse 17 to 18. Is it not yet a very little while, and Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field, and the fruitful trees shall be esteemed as a forest mm -hmm. change. Mm -hmm. And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book, mm -hmm. and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. The meek also shall increase their joy in the Lord, and the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. That was happening when Jesus mm -hmm. arrived. And it's still happening where Jesus is. Where yes. Jesus is... This happens. Mm -hmm. Actually, we're very blessed to uh, be enjoying a sort of season of revival and renewal. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Why? Because we. It's because Jesus is visiting us. Yes. Amen. This is what happens when mm -hmm. Jesus is. This is what happens. He delivers you from normality. Yes. Yeah. The curse of normality. Mm -hmm. Amen. I can tell you that if things are normal, you don't make much progress. There's that's something right. about normality that kind of bogs you yeah, down in the right. sand, in the muck and the mire. But Jesus broke all that. That's why he did this and told John, sure, see, nobody could do this but me. Now I want to look at the, these ailments as a depiction of what Jesus came to deliver us from. Mm -hmm. They were depictions of spiritual ailments yeah. Yeah. and where these spiritual ailments are found we really don't want an explanation mm -hmm. we don't want people to tell us why they're there we want them to be taken away mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you know you wouldn't want if you were one of these blind people you wouldn't want someone diagnosing why you were blind like the disciple says what's this man why was this man born blind was it was his parents sin or his sin <laughs> This is out of order. When you, the blind person wants to be healed. That's mm -hmm. He doesn't want to know why he's blind. Mm -hmm. well, let's look at these. The blind see. The lame walk. The lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. And the poor have the gospel preached to them. That's mm -hmm. a sign that Jesus was on, on site. Mm -hmm. Working. And where Jesus is, he does work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He does work where he is. Look first of a blind sea. <clears throat> now, if people have a physical blindness. We know they they have a, a decided handicap. This this is a, a bad thing to have. Mm -hmm. What about if people are spiritually blind? Yeah. What about that? What 
What if they can't see the things of God? Is that a serious situation? Yeah. Indeed it is. Mm -hmm. In fact, spiritual blindness is what the Bible calls ignorance. Mm -hmm. Unable to understand. Ephesians 4.18 tells us that we were alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that was in us. Spiritual blindness. Couldn't see, couldn't understand. You think it's... You think it's serious when in churches there are people that can't grasp the truth? They can't take hold of it? Mm -hmm. That when they hear some truth of God, some truth of the gospel, that they just can't get hold of it? You think that's serious? Well, indeed it is serious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Jesus can handle this. He can open the eyes of their understanding so they can mm -hmm. see. Think of this, 1 Peter 1.14. As obedient children, not fasting yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance. Don't live like you don't know anything. Mm -hmm. There are some people being introduced to truth, but they live just like they live just like there's no truth. They live like they're not going to have to face God. They live like there's not a judgment, there's not death, there's not salvation, there's not Christ. They live like tomorrow's cast in stone, mm -hmm. like they can make long-range plans. They live just like that. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Why? Blind. Mm -hmm. They yes. can't see. It's a serious malady. It's a serious malady. <laughs> Second Peter 1 Peter 1.9, he that lacks these things is blind, mm -hmm. can't see afar off, and forgotten he was purged from his old sins. Is he blind? This is a serious business. Mm -hmm. Jesus came. I'm showing here. That the physical ailments showed what happened to the inner part of it mm -hmm. as well. And how about those that were lame and couldn't walk? You've probably known people, maybe you've been one yourself, that just couldn't walk in the faith. They just, they just couldn't live for God. They couldn't go a day or two or a week or a month without some major blunder happening. They just couldn't do it. They always are falling back, doing the wrong thing. Why? They can't walk. Mm -hmm. They're lame. <laughs> Spiritually lame. Mm -hmm. Our scripture talks about this. He said to the Galatians, You did run well. Mm -hmm. Who did hinder you? Mm -hmm. What happened? Huh? You were on a sprint to glory and what happened? Well, there's some people, perhaps we need to ask this to. Mm -hmm. What happened? Mm -hmm. huh? You once had this love for the truth. You once were making progress. You were moving along from glory to glory. We could see it, and all of a sudden you've stagnated. Yeah. You're not walking anymore. Who hindered you? Somebody did. Yeah. Somebody did. There's nothing about new life in Christ that makes for stagnation. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit doesn't cause lameness. Somebody caused this. See, Jesus deals with this kind of lameness. Or how about this? Ephesians 4, 17. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth from this time on walk not as other Gentiles in the vanity of their mind. Don't live like, like other people who have no hope. Mm -hmm. Don't pursue them. I know sometimes people say, well, but I'm young, I don't understand. Well, get old and understand. Mm -hmm. Get out of that. Just get out of that. God's people, He intends for them to walk mm -hmm. and make progress. See? Whoever they are. How about this? Hebrews 12, 13. Maybe you've got a, maybe you, maybe you got a little limp. Hmm? Spiritual limp. Kind of dragging, you become crippled. Mm -hmm. Some people are crippled. Spiritually, they can't live right. They can't walk right. Here's what the scripture says, Hebrews 12, 13. Make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but rather let it be healed. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you don't want to have uh, crippled feet in your soul. Let it be healed. Mm -hmm. Unable to walk. How about uh, lepers cleansed? There are people that they can't stem the growth of sin. Sin just seems to be 
increasing. They're like worse every time you see them getting worse. I've seen it. I see this. Oh, you probably see it too. I see people every time I see them, they're going down a little bit more. They're getting a little more obtuse, dull, spiritually. They just, they got leprosy in their souls. Mm -hmm. Just eating them up. What about that? 2 Peter 2.14 speaks of false men who have eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin. Mm -hmm. Cannot cease from sin. Not no people like that. Cannot cease from sin. They just can't do it. Mm -hmm. Why not? They got leprosy inside their souls. Mm -hmm. That's why. They can't. Now you may try and think of a reason for it. Think of some little casual help for them, but let me tell you, you got you got this calls for a savior. Yeah. You gotta have a savior come into this situation to correct this remedy. Just as surely as people had leprosy, the lepers had Jesus had to come on the scene. There there wasn't any solution for leprosy outside of him. Mm -hmm. If you were to read back uh, Leviticus, believe it is thirteen, there was a there was a, a procedure for cleansing lepers. Mm -hmm. But we don't have one example in the whole Bible where it was ever used. Apparently there wasn't any ever <laughs> cleansed until Jesus came and he told them, go and show yourself to the priest. I've often thought they probably had to unearth that, mm -hmm. that text and go through and say, you know, we haven't done this in a long time. <laughs> Refresh himself. Jesus cleanses this infectious disease of not, and chronic disease of not being able to stop sinning. Mm -hmm. Cannot cease from sin. Oh, it was a tragic, tragic thing. And the deaf hear. <laughs> Incidentally, I cannot cease from sin. Jeremiah asked, Can an Ethiopian change his skin or a leopard his spots? Then may you also do good, which are accustomed to do evil. Mm -hmm. Can you change your own ways? No, you can't. But Jesus can. Mm -hmm. How about those that are unable to hear? Do you think it's serious? If you have a man or woman of God that's speaking, the people said they don't have the foggiest idea what's being said. Mm -hmm. You say, I don't understand. You think that's serious? Mm -hmm. You're not, you haven't grown accustomed to this, have you? Mm -hmm. This is not normal. Not since Jesus come, people right. not hearing this is not normal. This is abnormal. But churches are filled with people like this. They don't know what's being said. Mm -hmm. Can't understand it. It's like you're speaking in a foreign language. Mm -hmm. Serious, serious business. Jesus asked John 8, 43, Why do ye not understand my speech? Mm -hmm. Even because you cannot hear my word. Mm -hmm. Deaf. <laughs> but Jesus can correct that. Yeah. Well, it's happened to you, hasn't it? Yeah. Matthew 13, 13. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they see and see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to tell stories to them, and I won't explain to them what the story meant. Mm -hmm. How about Deuteronomy 29.4? Moses accounts for Israel's dullness. Yet the Lord hath not given you a heart to perceive, and eyes to see, and ears to hear unto this day. Mm -hmm. That's why, well, that's been updated. Now Jesus gives this. Yeah. He gives you ears. Mm -hmm. To hear. See, I'm showing you that this is depicting what the gospel remedy is about. Salvation, let me tell you. Salvation is about being able to see. Yeah. It's about being able to walk. Yeah. It's about being able to stem the tide of the growth of sin. Mm -hmm. It's about being able to hear. See, where these things are missing, salvation, what? It's not there. Yeah. This is what salvation does. It brings these capabilities. Again, he said, tell them the dead are raised. Brought back to sensitivity from a state of hopelessness. The dead are raised. Well, the scriptures speak about how the Christ distance and, and was in fact what we were, dead. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 2, 1, you had the quickened who were dead mm -hmm. in trespasses and sins. Now, people may theorize and philosophize about how dead's dead. You know, how dead is dead? Are they totally dead or partially dead or half dead or how dead is dead? Well, we have Jesus said record of him raising three people from the dead. Mm -hmm. One was Jairus' daughter. She just died. Still kind of kind of had a fresh look about her. Mm -hmm. Still. 
had a widow named son. He dead, but he was on the way to be buried, so mm -hmm. he'd been dead for a couple of days or so. And then it was Lazarus. He was really dead. Mm -hmm. He was four days, and his mortification set in. But see, actually, they, they all three were dead. Yeah. Jairus' daughter had no compunction about taking her by the hand, raising her up. You know, and she hadn't begun to decay or anything. She didn't look mm -hmm. all that bad. She was dead. Yeah. She had a widow of Nain's son. He was he was dead. He, he wasn't as dead as Lazarus was, but he was dead. Mm -hmm. Well, some people like this, they look pretty good. Mm -hmm. They're nice. They're good neighbors. We get along with them pretty good. They don't do anything especially bad, but they're dead toward God. Yeah. They can't, they have no response to God. God can work and you say, oh, was that wonderful what he did? And they didn't see a thing. Mm -hmm. See, dead. Jesus came to resolve that situation. He did. Dead. And how about this? The poor had the gospel preached to People, people, no one had any word for them. They got a word when Jesus came. Mm -hmm. Some of us, we were very dissatisfied about what we heard. Seemed like nobody really had a word for us. Kind of held out about superstars, you know, and mm -hmm. big famous people. And these kind of people that held out. It doesn't seem to be a word for us. Till Jesus came. And the gospel was preached to the poor. They had a word for them. Jesus said that... Uh, God sent preachers to people like this in Romans 10, 13-17. Now we're, without extending this, where there's salvation, where Jesus is at work, He has done these things. He has opened people's eyes so they can understand. This is a sign of salvation. He, he has enabled them to walk in the light as He is in the light. To Amen. walk in newness of life. Jesus has enabled them to stem the tide of the growth of sin. Sin no more.